Okay, we're going to call this one probably like the final outcome or the conclusion of racing. It's going to be a little different setting than uh, some of the past videos and that that I've done from over the years of racing and that. We're actually starting out here in the, this is our garage attic. Uh, just there, the trophies started to accumulate to be too much to be in the house and that. Uh, wife didn't like dusting them all and just there was just too many in that so we're starting off with this one here in the garage attic it's in the winter time now so it's a little bit chilly up here so this part of it will probably be a little bit shorter but then we're going to transition into uh, different areas throughout this video and I don't know how to pause them and restart without it making separate videos so there's going to be a little bit of time in between transition from one location to the next. These trophies, some of them are from are from the earlier years in that. Uh, Pepsi-Cola Super Series, Malvern, a lot of District 5 stuff. There's a, uh, see that one, there's the Pennsylvania State Championship. Uh, that would have been 125 class Steel City. Just from Various tracks, uh, Malvern, uh, I, I have a list, there's Ohio International I'm seeing, that I'll go through here a little bit later of some of the tracks and then I'm, some of them but not all. Uh, there's from Pamatooming, Whole Shot Raceway, just kind of a local track thing. And there's a first place on that one. So this is just some of the trophies that are up here that they really kind of need cleaned up and some need restored. The adhesive on the plates are coming off and different things on some of them. But uh, So we're going to go from here now down into the where it's a little warmer. Again, this is up in our garage attic, so we're going to be transitioning down into the, the lower part. I'm going to have to pause for a moment when I get down here just to uh, close this attic area. It's not heated up there, but the lower garage is. So I'm going to pause this for a second. And at least me talking, the video will continue on. And I gotta put up this attic way just to save our heat here. Just to hold up the spare space here. So I still have a motorcycle, always kept one. This here would be my 2000 and one YZ250. Uh, haven't had it out in a long time, just the bicycles and that, the old chest protector. This area of the garage was later on after I got married and moved here. This corner here was actually kind of the work area set up strictly for the motorcycles and that. For working on them, it was the workbench area, the upper cupboards and that. Had the parts washer. This here was designed so that Basically the heights from that uh, sink basin to the top there is for a set of forks and you're doing rebuilding forks and that. You got the air outlets stuff down here, air hoses, but in the toolbox. This, the, the lower chest was a newer one. The upper one, this tool chest, clear back when me and Dave used to do a lot of travel and this would have been from clear back in 78 and that. My parents got me this chest for Christmas one year had it ever since. Uh, so used to travel with me and Dave when we had the uh, bigger enclosed trailer and that. It's, this one's been around the area. Uh, done a lot of travel in here. So I'm just going to show some of the uh, decals from over the years in that. There's the uh, Super Bowl mo motocross, uh, July 4th, Los Angeles Coliseum. Uh, I have no idea what year that come from. Golden Spectro. So a lot of these companies, and I'm going to show some of the decals from over the years, a lot of old timers will find this unique because there's been a ton of companies come and go throughout the racing years, over the years. You had DG, uh, Olin's Gas Shocks, 
Metzler. JT Racing. There's one of Marty Smith, JT Racing, Phase 2 air filters, Bell Ray Performance. Uh, not sure how you pronounce that chain one actually. Bosch Spark Plugs, Metzler, Grift Leathers. There's an old one there, Keystone Motocross. That had to come from George Quay. Uh, Keystone then become Pro Action Cycles. Malcolm Smith, Fox. Here's an old one from the uh, Electron Carburetors when they sponsored the Florida Winter AM Series, AMA. Uh, when me and Dave were going down doing those here, there in Florida. This Gunner Gasser, Whirlpool Throttles. That was throttles at one time used to the cable used to make a big loop up off the handlebars. And this Gunner Gasser they come out with where the cable then would follow right back down the uh, handlebars sort of like I'll show an example now how that that would be a whirlpool throttle right there you can see how the cable now transitions straight in they used to do a big loop when they come off that before they would loop up and around and back down in but then they'd get snagged on stuff so I believe this gunner gasser was probably the very first as far as I remember, they invented that uh, basically a 90 degree system for throttle cables. Up on the top, you had high point boots, used to wear them uh, back many years ago. More JT Fox, the high point NGK plugs, JT Poly Air. Uh, so I'm just going to show some of these decals. I always had a box of but I kept a lot of old decals and that, used to put them on the bikes, different things. But over the years, just had a ton of them that never got used and kind of saved them then. So you got dirt shirts. Dirt shirts was, this would have been back many, many years ago. There was a company called Dirt Shirts. They traveled to a lot of the races. They made the uh, event shirts, T-shirts. They would sell T-shirts at all the races and that. And I don't know if John Ayers bought them out or took over, how that all transitioned or whatever, but dirt shirts now that would be, and I'm not even sure what he calls it today, maybe event shirts, but it's, as far as I know, I believe John has that as part of uh, gear race where they do all the event banners and that. Used to race with John around here. John also raced uh, District 5 local around here, but he lives has a gear out of Grow City PA. So, but that would have been before John ever had it, back when it was actually dirt shirts. This one here is the gate pass uh, for Steel City on Labor Day weekend, September 2nd, 2001. Not sure who's on the cover of that one. There's from Bud's Creek Pro National, uh, 125 Pro National, not sure what year. The old AMA Pro racing decals, Dirt Digger, Magic Racing. Some of these are going to get back in time quite a ways as we go on here. JP Racing, uh, Racer X. This here would have been from, here's St. Clairsville, GNCC, Matthews Farm, GNCC. Powerline Park, uh, just some of the different decals. These here would have been more GNCC racing. Some old Fox uh, from Motocross Fox, but this would have been later years when they transitioned into just kind of some wild designs. CT2, I believe that was knee braces they actually made. Hale on Wheels. This here would have been Randy Hale owned a, a shop down out of uh, between Mercer and Sharon. It's called Hail on Wheels. Randy's an old friend. Uh, we used to ride in later years quite a bit together in that. Randy was more into the off-road hair scramble stuff. Did GNCC's and that so uh, we used to go trail riding, do different stuff together quite a bit but Randy has also passed away. It's probably been 
probably five years now. He had formed, I believe he got cancer or whatever. I remember going to his funeral there and uh, they actually had one of his race bikes was set up beside his casket in that. Uh, so that was Randy Hale. Nike, 100% Smith, uh, Thor, Renthal, Acerbix, MSR. Here's an old one. Uh, Leland, if you ever see this video, you'll like this. This here is Ryder of Harbor Woods Motocross. It would have been Leland's dad and family in that that run that motocross track down in Newcastle. Uh, there's an old decal from back many years ago. Phil's Yamaha. Uh, I used to ride out of that shop. They were in Greenville, PA. Hallman. Uh, PSI. VP Racing Fuels. And again, a lot of these, here's an old one. Tough Racing. I'm trying to remember the name of, uh, I believe there was a rider, maybe it was uh, Tishner, not sure which one out of, up in Michigan, road for Tough. Bell Helmets, Oakley, Goggles, Amsoil, Chevy Trucks Patch, that's actually a sew-on patch for jerseys and that. That's, Chevy used to be a sponsor of Supercross. Moto Air, Peak. This here would have been, there was Team Peak. I believe they were a support team for Team Honda. Peak Antifreeze in that. That's back quite a few years ago as well. Uh, Here's an old one, Team Tam. Uh, I remember them being around. I really don't know who was riding for Team Tam in that back then. So, Sunstar, Wiseco Pistons. Not sure if they're still around. Cycle News, White Brothers. Here's Stay Back from O'Neill. This used to be on the back of a lot of my helmets. I always liked this duck. I actually had another version of this. Don't sure, sure, I'm not sure if they made the decal or whether it had it hand painted, but I had one same duck, but on the front of the helmet and it said up front. And then on the back of my helmets, I would have this stay back. It's a duck just with a revolver. Always liked that decal. High point tires. Camel Supercross. Camel used to be a sponsor of the Supercross series. There's another one of the Electron Winter Series. Wrangler. Wrangler was also another sponsor. You had Moose Racing. Old Alpine Stars. Here's an old one from back. Uh, Surf Racing. Jeff Glass was rode for Team Surf. Uh, it's an outside sponsor. One of the first ones to draw in an outside sponsor, but that was Jeff Glass, also a District 5, but at that time he was running the, uh, sponsored by Surf and was running the Pro Nationals and that. Just the old helmet that I had for a number of years. So we're gonna transition now and make our way on into another little setting here. Uh, we're just coming in from the garage area here. Got to get my uh, shoes off to go on into the house. So we're going to transition here in the house into a room here we got that's uh, when we built the house it had two extra bedrooms. Uh, when me and Shirley uh, got married in that. Originally we planned on we'd probably have a boy and a girl sometime. Never ended up having any children so when we built the house we built the, this bedroom. This here would be been what we were called the little boys room. But now it's kind of turned into a lot of just old memorabilia and stuff in here. Uh, this here was a cedar chest, an old cedar chest he got. And in it is just some of my old racing gear. I'm not going to dig it out. But it gives you a little bit of an idea of back in time. There, there was old snap-on mouth guards that used to go on the open face helmets. The lower snap-on uh, 
part that used to go below the Scott goggles. Just the camel backs, that would have been more from during GNCC years, that's in there. It's just a drink system you'd wear on your back so you could drink during the, because those were longer three hour races. Uh, some of the stuff from Kawasaki uh, at the Amateur Nationals and that, Loretta Lynn's Nationals, bibs and stuff from there. Some old chest protectors. That red one was from many years ago. That was clear back in this late uh, 70s, mid 70s. Had that one. I believe that's the very first one. I wish I still had. I had back in them early days your leathers. Uh, once we got up to even having leathers at the beginning you just raced in your blue jeans and that. But the leathers were made of actual heavy leather. They were the heavy padded leather pants. They were very hot in the summertime and you're always racing in the heat and that. But then you can see when the chest protectors, this is an old fox one, they become more a lot more vented plastic protection and that on them. Uh, so just got old leathers. I'm sure I got my old griffs and moving on leathers and different ones down there. This pair of uh that's a pair of Thor. I guess maybe they're still in my gear bag. There's a pair there that I used to wear from, I thought that was it, that would come from Ty Davis, was his. Uh, but apparently they are, well, I believe maybe that's them right there, the Fox ones. Those were, actually were Ty Davis's that, uh, for some reason he wasn't using them, and Johnny sent them back to me when he was Ty's mechanic. Here's a shirt. Uh, not sure if this will show up or not. This is 1974 Steel City Nationals. And if you look very close right there, you will see a signature. Kind of blends right in. That there is Jeff Stanton. Jeff, this here was the actual day and time when Jeff had just finished, uh, wrapped up the, I believe it was the 500 Outdoor National Championship. So he was the champ that year in the 500 class overall. 500 national champ, number one plate. He had just finished that race uh, right here then and come in. So I had this shirt. I don't know if I was wearing it or what, but just had Jeff sign that. Uh, so that is Jeff Stanton's signature there on the shirt. And that was the day and just shortly after he had wrapped up the national championship. There's an old, the old Moto 3 helmets. I used to wear them there, Bell Moto 3s, back in the day. And there was the Stay Back Duck, the back of the helmets painted with my name. I believe that was Chet from Chet's Custom Paint. Painted, no, maybe he didn't. There was a guy one day, I forget, we were out at, uh, somewhere out by Harrisburg that was painting helmets or something. And I think I, he painted that on the back for me. Uh, Chet had done some of my later helmets in that. Jeff just had custom paint uh, over out of Greenville. He'd done a lot of custom hot rods and stuff. So, And I knew Chet, so I used to have him paint some of this stuff. Here was a later helmet. I uh, had the stay back. That might have actually been Donnie Snyder that actually hand-painted that one on there for me. Uh, that was another old Moto 3. In here in the closet, I'm not going to dig them all out, but it's some of my old jerseys and stuff. There was a uh, Bud's Creek shirt from the 92 Nationals down there. Uh, Loretta Lynn's shirts. Uh, another Loretta Lynn's shirts. Just some old Fox jerseys. A Thor jersey. So just some of the old jerseys and stuff for here in this closet. So this room here really has a lot of the old memorabilia and stuff. My riding gear and that was kept here. There's other stuff in the dresser drawers and that, but I'm not going to dig it all out. There's a little motorcycle there. I always wanted to redo that one. Uh, just put the number 109 on it, but it never did. So we'll transition now back down through. we got to make it to the basement area of the house. When we were first married, we that's where we lived. We lived in the basement for, uh, I believe it was 14 years we lived down there before we ever built the the garage and house on top. Uh, 
So we're going to go down to the basement. And so the basement's all finished. That there was actually our home for quite a few years. We just lived down there. And we still use it an awful lot. But we're coming into the basement area. And down here, uh, there's our cat blessings. So this here, down here is some of the uh, trophies and that from the earlier years. And I'm going to set this down because I got to go pick something up here that I forgot to bring along. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. We'll call that the intermission break there. So, down here is still a lot of uh, trophies and that. And a lot of these in this case would be from the very beginning years, really back probably in 78 and 79 and around that time period. A lot of them probably from like Harbor Woods days. The ones inside. My father had built this trophy case for me. This was, I was still, before I was ever married, still a young kid. Uh, probably at that time, it was 16 and 78, 16, 17 years old, somewhere in there. So he had built this trophy case. I'm sure partly too for my mother, so she didn't have to dust trophies all the time. So this is from back in the early days. Uh, and then some of these over here in the corner, and some of them, even the ones on the outside on the sides, were from later years. There's also one in there from uh, wrestling, earlier wrestling and baseball. But these here were from some of the later years and more specific uh, ones in that. Like we had the uh, Senior Vet Eastern National Championships doing, that would have been in the vet class later doing that there, that there would have been at High Point Raceway. We had Pleasure Valley, a plaque there. Some of these were year-end things, season awards from the CRA competition. This one here was from the uh, State Championship Series in here, Pennsylvania uh, State Championship. This would have been Apparently in 83, uh, that would have been the 1983 District 5 Pennsylvania State Championship, first place, 125B class. Uh, there's a AMA District 5. This would have been later years in the VET class, 92, uh, in the state championship. That's a fifth place. That would have been... Uh, In, on that year. So that would have been the same year we did Loretta Lynn's, so I'm not really sure why it was a fifth. Maybe I missed. Well, I know I did. I didn't do all of them. I only done some of them out of that year, just seeing the names on there. So didn't do all of them. 
so maybe that's why I ended up with the fifth. This was the 93 uh, High Point Pro Nationals there. Starvation Point, Elizabeth, West Virginia. Delmont, which is Steel City back in 92. Team Green. Team Green used to do the uh, sponsor the uh, called the Spring Nationals. It was more it was called Nationals, but really it was more a uh, a little bit more local on that. It wasn't like an actual national, you know, not like Loretta Lynn's is an actual national across the country where this Team Green thing, I don't know why they call it uh, Spring National because it's more of a a local regional thing. Uh, just looking through some of these, I see there's High Point Amateur National Qualifier. That would have been back in the early years. This one here is uh, from Walden Playboys. That was a Loretta Lynch Regional back in 93. And then over on this wall here, this was more from the GNCC years. So we got uh, Powerline Park. And again, GNCCs, I never, it was off-road racing. Uh, did well enough to get, receive plaques and that, but never really I don't think I ever won a GNCC but uh, actually that one there's a tenth place that's probably about the farthest back that they would have paid out uh, positions there's another one from Powerline Park another year was a ninth Spring Valley was an eighth High Point was another eighth you had Wilderness uh, that was a fourth Loretta Lynn's this here was uh, 1999. So that would have been the year when uh, me and Don Harry Willard and all that went down there and done the GNCC down there. There was a, so that was a fourth overall. There was 104 bikes in our class that day. One start, one, all lined up, one line on the start, 110 bikes. Pretty sure it was 110, uh, maybe 104, but somewhere right in there. Largest one I ever done, largest class. That wasn't total number of entries, that was just our class. Ended up with the fourth there at Loretta Lynn's. Matthews Farm, uh, that was a sixth. Boyers, a uh, fifth. High Point was an eighth. And then this one here was another series called the A-Works, a different promoter. Uh, they do an A-Works series around here this is also off-road it's just it was a little more tight well it was a lot more tight it wasn't quite as high speed course it was a little more tight more technical technical riding in that that one there was from uh, I believe we did that one at Powerline Park they used that facility that day and that is one I won that day that is a first probably one of my only first from a series like that and then we'll go on over to this here would have been clear back. That picture would have been from 78, but in there was the, that's the first dollar bill that I ever made racing a motorcycle. Uh, but the picture is actually from in 78, so it wasn't running A class then. That would have been uh, amateur class at that time, but the dollar bill would have been from A class. So we'll transition over to this wall. This here would have been, this photo was taken from Powerline Park, St. Clairsville, a GNCC. That gives you a little bit of idea of what cross country racing can be like. That was through a swamp area that uh, you'd have dry areas, you'd have muddy areas, and this here was pretty much a swamp area, uh, pretty deep water. That's going through the water. Uh, not sure who captured the photo or anything, but actually has the GNCC racing right on it. That is me in the photo, and that was crossing through that swamp water area at that one. Don't know how I did that day or what place. This one here would have been from Loretta Lynn's, the Amateur National Championships. That was in 92. Uh, so I ended up there 14th overall. That was at the Nationals. Beaver Valley. 
guessing that was probably a motocross race. Some of these were motocross, some were hair scrambles, but that, I believe, was uh, motocross. Here was from Brownsville. It's a summer series. This here would have been in 2001. This here would have been motocross. Uh, took a second there that day. And then this one here is just switch back. Uh, it was a hair scramble, and that there I down by Butler, PA, and that was a first place on that one. So I'm going to back up here. I'm just going to set the video camera down so I don't have to continue holding this the whole time. And we're just going to uh, go over some things here now and that from the conclusion of all the years of racing and that. So I'm going to read off some of the tracks in that. I tried to come up with the list. I'm sure I missed a number of them, but these are the ones uh, that I could think of in that from over the years. And also pulling the, the names off the trophies, because some of the trophies have the location right on them, so I could get some of the names from them. So we had Ohio International, Pepsi-Cola Super Series, High Point Raceway, PA Indoor, the PA State Championships from Steel City, Sleepy Hollow, Rocky Ridge, Melbourne, Buckeye, Ohio, Whole Shot, Blanket Hill, uh, Limits, Alquista, this one here is down in Maryland, I believe I'm saying it right, but not positive. Salem MC Club, South Mountain, Bud's Creek, Stonebur Fairgrounds, Lawrence County Fairgrounds, Green Acres, Beaver Valley, Walden Playboys, Pleasure Valley, Challenger, Knox, Starvation Point, Loretta Lynn's, Brownsville, and Switchback. So that was a lot of the different tracks. Pulled a lot of the names in that off the trophies and that from different locations we had went to. Uh, and the accumulation then of race results basically would have been over the years, I started racing, or started riding, at about eight years old. This here would have been in the very late 60s. In there, started my very first race, I believe it was 1974. Almost positive of that, because that would have been my first AMA card. Remember that race, going to it and that. So started in 1974. And concluded, not sure the exact date or time, but I'm pretty close here when I'm saying 2004. So I had 30 years of racing in. Now, there was a period of time in there where I was, that wasn't 30 consecutive years. Because about in 83, I had quit racing, end of 83, 84, somewhere in there, to get married. Never come back to it then until... Uh, the end of 90s. <laughs> now, and also, in some of the prior videos I've noticed watching back through them, that uh, there's been various mistakes I made on the dates in that. Some of them when I'm saying 1982 was actually 92 or 92 versus 82. So I got some of the uh, years inverted there from the 90s to the 80s and that. Just too many years to cover in that. So some of them are a little bit mixed up, but most of them are pretty accurate. So over the years in that, then just some of the, and I'd have to say what, I got a lot of experience. Some of what I got out of racing has been lifelong uh, lessons learned. And what I mean by that, I probably got far more out of that than I ever got out of the actual awards or trophies. Just over the years, you you learned a lot of lessons from a young age growing up through. Uh, 
you just had from the experiences that come about that you just you can't duplicate them you can't really teach it you got to learn them from experience and some of them you know the work ethic that it gave you I mean you can't anything that you're going to earn and awards that you win and this would apply to any sport nobody gets to the top of any sport without being dedicated and putting in a lot of work and effort because what you want a lot of other people want as well you're all competing for the exact same thing so if you don't have a strong work ethic so it's teaching you work ethic that you got to stay in dedication if you don't put in the work you don't follow through with it you're not consistent with it you're never going to get there it's so you you learn the work ethic you learn to control your emotions you you learn to control anger even your bodily functions such as heart rate uh, you got to keep that under control during races and that you can't let that get out of control where you you have a crash or something so you start breathing really heavily and you just let emotion set in so you got to control things like that and those are things that really can't be taught to you you got to learn that and you pick it up on your own uh, even to give a little story like on controlling anger and that one and I, this was one of the times that i actually remember my bike quit and don't remember why or whatever but it quit and i took it and slammed it to the ground and kicked the bike well when i did i bust some busted off the one of the adjustment screws on the carburetor or something and so i learned from that then at, at that time i had to fix this stuff myself and pay for it so you learn like don't do that it's gonna you know step back control it. don't you know try to control your anger in that step back from it and you learn to control even to s suppress pain in a way not meaning that it you can cure it or anything but you can put it out of your mind and I'll give an example like if you've ever been on say a treadmill or a bicycle and say you're gonna do 30 minutes on this bicycle an indoor stationary bike you're on the bicycle and you start pedaling and that and you got it set at a certain rate and speed and all that and you watch that clock the timer on there if your mind's focused on that right there of watching that clock you're going to be two minutes into it and you're already going to be feeling exhausted like you can't do it and it's very hard to do but if you can control your mind get it off of what you're doing what you're feeling at the moment the tiredness and all that put it in another area and so you're you're on the bicycle same intensity a different time doing the same basic workout same speed same intensity but you can get your mind off on a totally another thought where your mind then takes you away and you're thinking of something else whether it's what you're going to do that day or reminiscing in the past whatever it may be pretty soon you look down at the timer and you're already at 20 minutes and you don't even really realize that the 20 minutes went by even though you're doing the same intensity so it's sort of like that even in racing when you'd be racing at times my younger years I remember I come in and this was before I was wearing a chest protector all the time you come in after the race and later that day you notice you got black and blue marks on your chest in the front of you and welts in that and you remember you felt certain things but you didn't even really remember it but yet you were hit hard enough to leave bruises and welts on your chest in the front and this here is from rocks coming off the other bikes roosting you because you're getting hit with them rocks and that pretty hard as they're coming back at you but at the time you felt it but you put it out of your mind immediately and focused on what you were doing so you learn to control different things like that you learn too also that your choices have great consequences of what you choose to do and this this applies to life not just racing it applies through everything you do the choices you make you can suffer great consequences or you can reap great rewards from them and as an example into racing when you go out there and you there's a big set of doubles or a big set of triples and somebody else has done them 
but you got to evaluate, you know, before you do this and come up with a pretty good estimation of whether you're going to make it or not because there you're facing injury and you got to be able to be pretty confident and know that your choice here you can suffer some dire consequences you you attempt that and you come up short uh, injury is quite common so you got to decipher these decisions you're making and it applies to in life everything you're doing you better really decipher your choices of what you're doing and what are you just wasting your life away are you just wasting your time away doing useless things that you're not going to have any gain from or in some cases you're going to uh, suffer injury from you, you got to learn how to lose basically because you're going to do a lot of losing over the years as well as winning and it's those times when you lose that there's a lot to be learned from how do you handle it what do you do with it uh, and you have to learn. Losing can be okay. you got to turn that into a positive and learn from your mistakes why you lost in that. Sometimes I think the younger generation today, that, that's a real problem. is because they're never really put in situations where they got to face losing or not getting what they want. And then when it, later in life, things happen. You don't always get what you want. Uh, it isn't always just you get what you want. If you don't work for it, you don't get it. And then being able to handle that causes a lot of issues later in life in that. So you gain those lessons through sports. Uh, there's just a lot to be learned there. So it's really the life lessons over the years was probably the greatest thing that I ever got out of the racing in that. You learn your mechanical abilities that you take through you, how to fix things, how things work in that, because you better get a deep understanding into some of the, the issues so when something's happening on the bike, things don't just happen, there's always a reason why. Uh, they don't just break, they break for a reason. So you got to analyze that and know that, and everything that happens basically in life, happen, it doesn't just happen. I don't believe there's such things as just luck and things just happen. Things happen for a reason. And a lot of times if you repeat these same actions over and over, you get the same results. So it's another life lesson there you get out of racing. Uh, you've got a lot of great memories. You've got a lot of experiences. Uh, you've got to meet a lot of great people over the years, the traveling, seeing the different destinations and places. The friendships that you develop uh, through the racing years and just the whole experience of it. I mean, there's experiences that's a little bit hard to explain, but back when we were going all the time, you develop a sense of smell and sound and feelings in that. that I used to be able to go into, walk into the racetrack, you'd walk in early morning and just the smells of the campfires, the smell of the burning fuels from the bikes starting up to go out for practice. Uh, you could tell if a guy was running back then, we used to run airplane fuel for the higher octane fuel in the early uh, 80s, late 70s and that. You could smell, just the smell in the air that you'd pick up. A lot of people maybe didn't even recognize it, but you would smell. You'd recognize them smells of the fuels in there, the sounds. I could tell without even seeing uh, the bike size, whether it's a 125, 250, 500. You develop all these different senses in that that go along with it. Uh, so just a lot of experiences like that along the way. Also, the scars and injuries. You have a number of injuries over the years, but you learn from them lessons as well. Uh, you take with them just a lot of experiences from over the years. Kind of the conclusion of the racing besides just the the trophies really are just a thing, but they're a piece of memorabilia that brings back memories when you see them. 
not so much the the value of the trophies or the things or the plaques they're in a way they're kind of worthless they don't mean a whole lot other than they do bring back a lot of memories from over the years so uh, spotting a few things also a few of my race helmets they're got different helmets from over the years and that saved some of them the one there on the uh, left I'm not sure from what years there the one on the blue over the blue helmet over there I believe I don't know that I actually even ever wore that one very much at all that was probably from I remember that was an award from one of the races one day they were actually giving out helmets and I'm pretty sure that's one where that one come from it was an, an award from a race instead of a trophy they actually give out helmets that day so not sure where that one come from right off but I'm pretty sure that was an award from one of the days and that's so kind of uh, cold winter day here the fires going in the stove and just gonna look back through uh, some of my notes here a little bit to see if I kind of missed anything or anything that I want to go over oh I don't know if I covered this or not yet but the accumulation from over the years just in adding up the number of trophies counting them up and the trophies would actually only be an accumulation from the uh, amateur races once you go into the A class the A class pays money so don't have many records from that but I did spend uh, from the end of 79, 80, 81 and into 82 we're all in the A class so but through the number of trophies adding up the number of races through the A years and that doesn't count the number of times you did races that you didn't trophy and that so it, it's totaled up somewhere right in the neighborhood of 300 races overall and a motocross race consists of uh, one that's 300 individual races different weekends so and each race consists of two motos in motocross so that would have been approximately 600 gate drops over the years it's an, equals up to about if you did one race if you were going every single week you did one race a week never missed the entire year for 52 weeks out of the year it totals up to you would go for six straight years every single week never missing to accumulate that many races but again I'd done that over a period of 30 years which of that 30 was I probably spent maybe 22 of them racing the other years uh, and of those 22 years only some of them were more full-time there was a number of years that was kind of limited races in that so it was an accumulation of over all them years so it's probably about 22 years roughly of actual race years some of them doing a lot more than others uh, also got the uh, a lifetime award or earnings of a uh, lifetime AMA membership after you accumulate 25 years with the AMA they give you a it's an earned lifetime membership uh, before that you always have to join pay dues every year after your 25 years you become a lifetime member so got that also out of the years of racing but just a lot of memories a lot of friendships over the years sad to say a number of friends now have passed on uh, but hopefully and if I can ever figure out how I may post this to uh, YouTube some of the different racing years I'm sure a lot of the guys that you raced with over the years especially when it comes to seeing and hearing the names of some of these old tracks seeing a lot of the companies that used to be around that are no longer around and if this video ever does get out there if I do figure that out put it out there 
and I've missed some of your names. Uh, apologize for that. I just I'm going on limited memory here today. This is a lot of years later. Uh, spent a lot of time with a lot of different guys, raced with a lot of different guys over the years. So, not that I forgot you or anything, just uh, the name hasn't come right back to the front here for one reason or another. And if anybody sees this and got things to add or corrections to make that they remember differently, of like, hey, maybe this happened that year that I said happened in 83 or 82 or whenever it was, feel free to put up corrections or add to the story. Uh, and hope to hear from some of you if this makes it out there. Just some of the old friends in that that I haven't heard of from years. So feel free to post your name, put it up, and uh, again, we'll, we'll go from there and I'll conclude this particular one. I'll probably do another one yet from Forgotten Memories or something when that, as they come back. So this will be the conclusion of the finalization of the racing years.